Similar to the fMRI tutorials, our goal in analyzing this data set is to generalize the results to the population that the sample was drawn from. In other words, if we see significant classification accuracy in these subjects, can we say that it would be likely to be seen in the population as well? With MVPA, we have two different types of group analysis, ROI and Searchlight. We will review how to do each of these in turn. One of the first level analyses we did was classification analysis with a region of interest or ROI. In this case, we used masks created in the original Haxby study and generated a single classification accuracy for each condition for each subject. When we scripted our analyses in the last video, these results were stored in the directory ROI results in the SPM results directory for each subject. In order to do a group analysis, we will need to extract the classification accuracy for the conditions we are interested in and then compare the accuracy across conditions. The script from the GitHub link down below will extract the classification accuracy and store them in variables. Go ahead and save this if you want, or copy and paste it into a new MATLAB script, whichever one you prefer. The details about the script can be found in the link to the ebook down below. For now, all you need to know is we're extracting the classification accuracy for conditions four, five, and six, which correspond to faces, houses, and scissors. We can then use the t-test command to do a direct comparison of the accuracies between different conditions. Run the script by typing ROI group level analysis, which will store the results in different variables. For example, within FH stats is the comparison between the accuracies of faces and houses, which in this case was not significant. The comparison of faces against scissors, on the other hand, yields a t-statistic of 5.8 and p less than 0.01, representing a significant difference between the two. The group analysis of the searchlight results requires more steps. Remember that our pre-processing pipeline did not include normalization. Therefore, our searchlight maps will need to be normalized before they can be used in a group analysis. To do this, open SPM and then open the batch editor. Select basic IO, file dir operations, file operations, named file selector. Set the input name to anatomicals and create six file sets. Within each of these sets, we will select each subject's realigned anatomical image for the corresponding file set. I'm going to speed this up after the first couple once you get the basic pattern. Now create a segmentation module by selecting SPM Spatial Segment. Highlight the Volumes field and click Dependency, selecting all the images from the named file selector. In the Save Bias Corrected field, change the selection from None to Save Bias Corrected, and at the very bottom, change the deformation fields to Forward, and click the green Go button. This will take a few minutes, so I'll fade out and come back when it's finished. When it's done, go back to the SPM GUI and select Normalize, and then Write. Create six new subject fields and select the corresponding deformation field in the ANAT directory and the res accuracy minus chance.nai image for each subject in their corresponding results folder. Again, after I do it for the first couple of subjects, I'm going to speed this up once you get the basic pattern. Then click the green Go button, which should only take a few moments to run for each of those files. The normalized classification map for each subject, which now has a W prepended to it, can be overlaid on an MNI template of your choosing to make sure that it was normalized properly. In this case, I'm going to select the T1 image from the canonical directory. Take a look to make sure the basic outlines match up. 
You may also choose to smooth these normalized results in order to make the assumptions of the t-test more valid. To do this, click on Smooth and select the normalized images in each subject's folder. In this case, I will also reduce the smoothing kernel from 8, which is quite big, to 6 by 6 by 6. This is optional in case you want to change it. Then click the green Go button and it should finish in a few moments. We are now ready to do a group analysis. From the MATLAB terminal, create a new directory by typing mkdir second level group results. Then click on specify second level and select this new directory in the directory field. Double click on the scans field and select all of the smoothed and normalized accuracy maps. Then click on go and this should only take a few moments to run. Click the Estimate button next and estimate the model within that new second level directory. When this is finished, you can now click on Results. Just as with the fMRI studies, you can create a single contrast weight to determine where the classification accuracy is above chance. In this example, we will use a voxel-wise threshold of P equals 0 0.001 and a cluster threshold of 50. See the link below for a guide to cluster correction if you want to fine tune this. Notice that the results are strongest in the ventral temporal and occipital areas, similar to the results reported in the original Haxby paper. For a whole brain analysis of accuracy minus chance, the assumptions of a t-test may not hold completely. A paper by Olafeld and colleagues found that another method called prevalence testing may be more appropriate. In our case, this method may not be sensitive enough to work with only six subjects, but we will explore other approaches in future chapters.